Can we talk about the elephant in the room? And by that I mean telepathy, the not-so-secret art of reading minds. What once seemed like the realm of fantasy and science fiction is now pretty close to reality. What do I mean by telepathy? I mean the ability to sense or hear or feel another person's thoughts that we tend to believe is private. We tend to believe that our thoughts are kind of contained in our own mind and no one really has access to those. Well, we don't really know, but that's kind of what's been the commonly held belief. What I'd like to say though is, if you've ever partaken in psychedelic medicines or drugs, such as cannabis, mushrooms, LSD, ayahuasca, you may have had experiences where you felt like at the very least you were on the same vibe as the people around you, or maybe one person. You may have had experiences where you feel like you're suddenly just thinking the exact same thought as someone else at the exact same time. And you look at each other and you, wait a minute, what? Oh, and you realize you have this recognition. Oh my gosh, we're both in that same moment. You know, so you can be on that same wavelength. And those kinds of moments are actually very common when we're under the influence of mind altering chemicals. I don't purport to have any clue as to why or how that works. What I can say though, and what I'm curious to know is, what is that capacity that we have as humans? And I'm not just talking about sensing a mood, right? We can be empathetic and sense the mood of the room. We can take the temperature of the room. If we know someone very well and we know their patterns, we can be extremely perceptive and more or less know what they're thinking, right? It's easy to justify or rationalize that as, well, I've known them for a long time. People are creatures of habit, et cetera, et cetera. But what about when it's a stranger who you don't know? What if it's a friend you've only hung out with once or twice, then how could you explain that? That's on the kind of new age and psychedelic side of things. If we go to the other side of things on the science side of things and the tech side of things, what we do know and what has been researched and proven is that when we think of the letter A, for example, I'm gonna close my eyes and think and picture it. Okay, so when I do that, my brain is producing a specific combination of waves of electromagnetic radiation that is congruent with or that represents that shape or that symbol A. And our brain can output that signal. And in fact, it can be read or deciphered via technological gadgets. So there are these little brain helmets that you can put on your head that have electrodes all over your scalp. And the reason for that is because they need to be really, really close because our brains, they do send and receive information and signals like thoughts. The thing is, is that they're not really strong and they're not like really amplified. So it's like if you had a guitar and you're playing the notes and you can't really hear it, but when you plug it into the amplifier and turn it up, bam. <laughs> so it's like that with our brains, but we don't have that we know of necessarily. We don't have an amplifier, so we can't send those signals out with a lot of power um, over a long distance. So they actually have to put those electrodes right on the scalp. You need a lot of the electrodes. Uh, the more, the better. Some of them I've seen with only even like four electrodes, but it can be done. So if we can, through technology, read the waves, understand what letters they correspond with, and that translates out to, for example, other words. So if you think of a horse, and then you think of an apple, then you think of the clouds, those all have their own unique signatures, which can be learned and read through these machines. So you can imagine how easy it would be then to read someone's mind. <laughs> of course, we have more complicated thoughts and feelings than just letters and words and objects but it's the same principle. It's just a little bit more complicated, that's all. So if we know that we've had experiences of having what feels like telepathic moments where we're totally in sync with other people, whether through psychedelic drugs or whether some people just have these experiences just in their ordinary lives. So if we have that evidence, and then we also have 
experiments and technological devices. I mean, not only do we have those caps that go on your head, but there are also the implants, which I'm sure you've heard of, and that goes inside your brain, which makes it a lot easier to actually detect the signals because they don't have to go through the hair and the scalp and the skull. I'm not recommending you put an implant inside your brain. I'm just saying that that's, that technology in theory makes it a lot easier to actually receive, decode, and then modulate those signals. Whether through technology or through other more natural means, it seems like humans do have this built-in capacity for instantaneous or near instantaneous communication without actual words being spoken. And I'm not just talking about body language. I mean, transmitting very complicated thoughts like a whole sentence or something like that, which you're not gonna look at someone the way they're, the way they're standing and say, ah, oh, yes, he's, <laughs> and then read off a paragraph that he's thinking in his mind. That's not how it works. But we may not be that far off from that. And I'm so curious as to having gone through this whole process where we have invented the internet, we've invented all of the wireless technology so that we're kind of with texting and everything like that, it's almost kind of sort of getting closer to instantaneous. And for people who are really plugged in, you've got all kinds of messages happening at the same time and many, many, many threads. So it kind of gives that feeling of being really in the flow. But what if we didn't actually need the clunkiness of like type, 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 or talking, talking, talking. And what if it could all kind of happen really simultaneously? So then we'd be approaching something more like a colony of bees or a hive of ants perhaps in the way that I don't know too much about this biologically, but the way that they seem to have a singular mind and all of those individual ants or bees or whatever creatures are kind of operating in the same matrix. Is that something that is on the human evolutionary trajectory? I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but I'm really curious about that. Like how efficient we would be and how, oh, you know, also just how we wouldn't be able to, because most of the crappy things about our society have to do with lying, cheating, stealing, and all of that. It's all the hiding that we do. It's not just that, it's also about respect. Because let's say we had ways of actually being open to all communication from all people at the same time through this telepathy. That doesn't mean we would necessarily individually, okay, I'm gonna go listen to what my neighbor is saying right now, because along with that kind of power is the responsibility of actually respecting our fellow human beings. We need self-respect in order to be able to use that kind of technology or that kind of evolutionary gifts or power that we want to step into that and be part of that future of evolution of what we're doing here on this planet and how we're going to do it. Communication is everything. The way that we have been communicating thus far has been sort of piecemeal and kind of at the mercy of these big telecommunications companies, these industries, these monopolies that do sort of have a stranglehold on what we can actually say and what we can't say. But I wonder about the sort of natural ability to learn those skills. The architecture is there, but this is pretty far out there and it's not something that you would really learn about in school as a child or read about in books or something. And there's not really like classes to teach how to do this because I don't think we really completely know how to or even we're not even ready to handle it quite yet. But I know that there are plenty of individual people and groups of people who are operating on these kinds of frequencies and these wavelengths, if you want to call it that. And I do find that really fascinating. It's really interesting that that is something that's kind of possible that we don't really, I don't hear people talking about it. You know what I mean? Like, oh wait, maybe that's because they're doing telepathy. <laughs> No wonder no one's talking about it. Anywho, it's just like a fun little thought experiment that I wanted to talk about. And if you have any experiences that are similar to this or you wanna share something about that telepathy, feel free to let me know. I'd love to hear your stories.